Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm hijacking my own video. This actual video that I'm interrupting was actually recorded quite a few days ago, actually. Um, but I'm just using it to apologise. This will be posted on Monday, so I'm apologising for no Sunday chat. Um, it just didn't work out that there was some um, time or space or subject matter to do a Sunday chat. So I've just missed it this week. Doesn't happen often, but it's happened this time. And in addition to that, I'd like to thank everybody for quite a massive jump in my subscribers. This is brilliant. I mean, it's, it's what I'm after. It's what I... <laughs> I keep plugging, I suppose you could say, uh, even though I don't want to sound as though I'm plugging. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All I'm asking for is that people who regularly watch, you know, that are not subscribed, just subscribe to the channel because it costs nothing and it will not change your life in any shape or form or your viewing or anything, but it will be a big help to my channel. So again, if you haven't, please do so if you feel inclined. Um, it can do no harm. And as I said, it's a, a little misleading, the word subscribe, because it sounds like a subscription, as though you've got to pay some money. It's totally free. It's just click the button, and all it does is bump my subscribers up by one. And when I get to that 10,000, it's going to be a big deal for me. And also, it could be a big deal for quite a few of you because there will be a really substantial giveaway when I get there, which I haven't mentioned before, although I might have done. <laughs> but yeah, get me there and then you're in for a massive giveaway and I'll try and make it as worldwide as I can because I know, you know, it's quite difficult. You can't, you can't send plants all over the world that just can't happen so I can't give away plants and things like that I'll make it worth your while <laughs> so again as I said if you're not subscribed please do so especially if you're a regular viewer you've got you've got nothing to lose and I've got lots to gain <laughs> um, yeah so I've interrupted a, a, a video that was pre prepared already made ready to go and I've stuck this bit on the front and it's literally to say thanks for those who have subscribed, those who haven't, please do so. And thanks for staying with the channel. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for the comments. If I get up in the morning at five o'clock and get my coffee and sit down in the computer and there's no comments, I just well go back to bed because there's nothing to do. <laughs> so they are part of my day, those comments. Seriously, they're part of my day. My YouTube channel, I, I feel, is a job. It, it's my job. Um, my orchids are my hobby. My YouTube channel is my job. And part of that job is dealing with those comments. And I do that first thing in the morning when I get up. While, while my bleary eyes try and wake up to the world around me. Um, so anyway, um, sorry about the no Sunday chat. It doesn't happen often. Um, we will have one next week, I'm sure. Or this week because it's Monday now losing track of me days here <laughs> that's the trouble when you start recording things on days and you need to refer to days you have to work out when you're going to post it to work out what day you're relating to so this is being recorded late on Sunday afternoon it will be posted on Monday morning and um, again thanks for those that have subscribed brilliant and for those who are watching and haven't it would be nice if you could. So uh, anyway, let's get on with the video. So it's now going to start again. <laughs> this is going to seem weird. Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is an unboxing in the kitchen. And there may well be a good reason for that. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be pleased with what I've got here. This was a spur of the moment purchase. Which may on reflection be deemed a bit silly but uh, we'll see what we got you wouldn't guess <laughs> oops many thanks for your purchase handwritten we like a oh i got a letter as well this is probably a care guide it is a care guide it's 
quite a comprehensive care guide. It's a nice touch. I like these sorts of things. I don't specifically need it, but... <laughs> Guess what it is yet? <laughs> I'll tell you what though, that's a lovely sturdy box with a nice proper lid. It may come in handy for somebody else. Right, now what have we got? This is clean film. I actually see green. Um, I wasn't expecting to see green stuff. Let's see, we've got a very careful how I get this out now. Let's see if we can do it with the scissors. It might be easier. It's cling film, so it's doing what it's supposed to do and clinging. I've got the scissors under there, then we might be able to start tearing. Ah, that's better. Just run the blade up. There's obviously a lot of water because this end is soaking wet. Uh, that will be where the plants are, no doubt. Well, that's the hybrid name. Can you guess what it is yet? <laughs> and I'll let you into another secret as well. It's not what it is, it's what they are. off first. Do I want an elastic band? No. Right. Now we've got a toilet roll and they've obviously been slid in so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this toilet roll apart um, because I don't want to try and push them out and force them if you see what I mean so I'm gonna see if it will unravel like that gently. get to the wet bit it'll just fall apart I'm sure which it is heavy on the moss and more cling film <laughs> and I hope these are viable plants Basically splattered in the sphagnum moss. Right, so first thing is we were conned because basically the way it was worded it said I was getting four when in actual fact they meant they've got four for sale. Yeah, that's not how you work on eBay, I'm afraid. A few of the roots have um, come off. So what we've basically got is a Deesa with a good sized bulb, growing root, growing root tips, growing root tips and some greenery on the top that's very wet that needs to dry off, which it will do. Right, now reason why it's in the kitchen will now become apparent. Um, I'm just going to throw that in the bin and that kind of thing. There. Actually, I'll have to go and recycle some of it. Well, let's just put it out of the way for now. And um, I'm just going to break off and I'll come back and there'll be a change in the environment here um, because that needs potting right now, which is why I decided to unbox it in the kitchen. That root's broken, so that one's gone. Ugh. These are awful pieces, the actual roots. You've only got to look at them and they flip and break. Incredibly fragile. Right, I'll be back. Right, this is the reason I'm back. I had three pots of pieces, they're all the same. Um, one of them died, they were the tiny little offshoots. They, they didn't make it, um, they went over quite quickly. Another pot full I gave to a friend and this is all I had left and many of these have died. This one produced a flower spike that failed leaving this one with a single new growth. The media has gone in here. These should have been repotted last autumn. They didn't get done. So I'm going to try and save this and the reason why I'm doing it now 
not when it ought to be done in the autumn, could be dead by then, is that I've got to get the media out to pot that one. Well, if I'm going to get the media out, we just as well have a go at this at the same time. Now, I don't know what I'm going to have in the pot. All I know is that these are incredibly fragile. dead so that can come off. And what we've got left they recommend with DSOs that when once you get them out of the pot you don't touch them but basically you just drop them in some clean water and, and allow the media to sort of soak off try not to right so what we've got here is no stolon no little bulb just a plant. But here we have, it's not a very big one, but it's got a single new growth with the start of some roots. It is possible I can save that. Let's just rinse my hands. Basically because I want to handle my scissors, <laughs> which I'll clean. Uh, the reason I want to handle my scissors is because I'm not potting this up with any dead stuff on it. So these leaves are coming off. Very prone to rotting, these are. And once it gets in them, that's a lot. So even though some of these leaves are marked, it has got a growing point and it has a one single new growth. So that is a viable piece. That can grow on. That's what I was after. So we can put that with our um, new one and we can bin that along with the media. Now recommended media for these, peat. Alternatives, peat. And if you're not too keen on using peat, you need to use peat. Don't muck about. Many have tried the alternatives and they don't work as good. They may just about work, but they don't work as good. These thrive in a peat mix. And the one I'm going to go for, there is a DESA specialist in this country, Dave Parkinson, who doesn't open to the public, he only does mail order. And he doesn't do it very well either, because he doesn't do online payments. You have to send a cheque or some sort of banker's order, uh, which is a bit old fashioned, but that's how he is. Um, so you can't go there and visit and choose your plants or anything like that. You have to rely on him sending reasonable stuff, but he's got a good selection. Um, and apparently he's, he's a great guy to actually deal with, but you have to deal with him. You've got to phone him up and chat and talk about what you want uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, I haven't yet to do that. I think, uh, I think Rachel actually dealt with him um, and said that he's a little difficult to deal with compared with some others but the plants were okay. Um, yeah so basically the mix I'm going to use is peat and in amongst that peat about 60% peat so you know over half the bulk will be peat and in there is going to be some perlite. The recommended mix is 60% peat and 40% perlite but the perlite it's talking about is the, is the perlite you can get in the EU, which is the tiny stuff, yeah? Whereas I'll be using some sponge rock. And what I'm gonna do is add some grit in with it. I'm gonna make sure it drains well and doesn't stay soggy. So although they are bog plants, and it's recommended you stand your pot in a tray of water, rainwater, <laughs> you get hard water on these, they keel over, they need pure water constantly and hardly any food at all just a little bit in spring to give them a bit of a kick and then a little bit to ripen them off in autumn but they don't they're, they're very low feeders um, they, and any build up of salts and the roots go <laughs> look at them wrong and the roots will go <laughs> yeah so that's why i did this in the kitchen i'm gonna throw this lot away get this out of the way that can just go out in the garden and then i'll get some media and we'll mix up a mix for these and quite honestly um, 
you're not going in pots anywhere near that big this time round. Keep their roots a little bit more confined. Problem is with these, they're deep rooting. So they actually like a cymbidium shaped pot, you know, deep but narrow. They don't need width, the roots don't spread out, they go down but they do need that depth apparently to be really happy. And if you look at this, this one, you know, this has got to go underground up, up to about here where the roots start. Um, you know, it's over at an angle slightly. I will probably pot it at a slight angle. This will straighten up as time goes on, as the leaves open. So, uh, right, let's get rid of the mess and we'll come back and we'll get these two potted, um, get them labelled up and um, See if they'll see if they'll start to grow again. This has only gone down because the media went off. Simple as that. We've been in the pot too long, um, and obviously constantly soggy. You know, actually standing in water. So although they need an acidic media, not that acidic. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, this is uh, not ideal because the next size pot. Is quite a bit bigger but is no deeper. I haven't got any really long thin pots. These are small plants so I'm gonna trust that they'll be okay in what I consider a normal size pot for an orchid but the guy I know at the Orchid Society who grows a lot of Deezers he always recommends putting them in a big pot and over potting them basically. Um, and he does grow nice ones, but I haven't got pots, so I'm going to run with what I've got. So this is the peat. It's um, coarse peat, but it's got some chunky bits in it. And I've got two potfuls of them. I don't want to waste this, that's the thing. Um, it be difficult to get again, real peat like this proper bog peat, but it has got some very coarse bits in it, so it has got chunky bits in it. So we'll leave it at that. I'm a bit short, I'll add some. I'm going to have to keep rinsing my hands. I suspect most of the peat's going to end up on under my fingernails, which desperately need cutting. I've just got to remember to do it sometime. Right, so this is the grit. No, it's not. That is lecker. That's bad news, that means I haven't got any grit, so we will have to do without it. I have a feeling that I don't remember using it all, and I went to where I thought it was and it's not. Let me just have one last look in one other place. I'll be back. Nope, it's hidden. It's either hiding or I have used it all up and just didn't remember doing it, basically. Well, the original recipe was peat and perlite, it didn't mention grit just the guy at the Orchid Society. He's got like recipes for different plants that you know he sticks to religiously measuring them exactly. And um, his recipe has definitely got peat and he gets uh, sphagnum moss and chops it up really really small and adds that in and then he's got his grit and his perlite and he's got his special recipes that he uses. Um, I never go to that extreme. <laughs> I was just sort of thinking, you know, where they grow in the wild, they don't get somebody go, going round with a cup measuring out the uh, soil in exact portions, do they? <laughs> but there again, when we take them out of the wild, um, you know, we've got to do a lot better for them than they do naturally in the wild because we've taken them away from their natural environment. And where Deesas come from, it's up the mountain, Table Mountain, around South Africa. And they come from reasonably high up, so they're cooler growers, but they can often be found in full sun. But again, it's that, that atmosphere that's, that's higher up. And um, so they get away with that sun. And um, they have virtually always got their feet in water. They grow in often the edges of the streams in running water or um, runoff water, seepage water that comes out of the sides of the steep slopes and cliffs and things and, and they've got their feet in water, running water 
and that water is flipping cold. It's just come from the top of the mountain and probably was snow not that long ago. So they do have a, a strange place to grow, their little niche that they've found. Um, I've got a feeling that this... Uh, so I'm breaking this up simply because it's... Um, as it is, this size, it's not not part of the normal recommended recipe. So I'm just actually going to crush some of it as well. I need some smaller pieces in here so that it's a bit more like what other people would use. That'll do. As I say, as long as it's got some air in there and some drainage, I'm sure it'll be okay. So I'm just trying to look at, um, I can't do percentages obviously, especially as this is a larger size um, per light than would normally get used. But I can picture in my mind the picture I've just been looking at um, on Dave Parkinson's website about what his media looks like, you know, when it's mixed up. And the percentage of white against black, that's what I'm picturing. And this doesn't look bad. I'm going to add some more in. I've got to watch shaking this stuff up and over the dust. Add some more in. At the end of the day, they stand in water a lot of the time. Um, I just they stand in one of my drip trays and I top the tray up with water and when I see that that water's sort of gone I fill the tray up again. Uh, I don't keep them quite that wet in the winter but they do stay wet. Um, basically these can go down to almost freezing in their natural environment um, in the winter so they can take the cold um, but again with that thinner air. I reckon that'll be okay. Now comes the difficult bit, is trying to get those plants in that media without any form of pressing or rubbing, because this perlite will scratch and damage the roots, and that could lead to infections and things. So I want to try and keep them, get that out of the way. I just put the media in and let it fall around the roots and then tap the pot. That's all I plan on doing. So we'll have some in the bottom. So again I could do the you know do the deeper pot. I really could. I'm just hoping they'll twist. Yes they will. Right. And then I'm just gonna drop this in and let it just let it fall. And then tap the pot. quite important to get the depth right as well. This new growth has got a white base to it and a green top. That tells you where the level is. Yeah? Where the white stops. That's where it was before because it was underground. Right. Is that enough? It's, it's going to flatten down, isn't it? I really wish. See, the, I, last time I did these I also topped the pot with grit to stop the dampness right around the base of the pot. I might go and buy some. That means going out, doesn't it? <laughs> Mixing with people again. And I'm not going anywhere where I would specifically find any. I'd have to go to a garden centre or something. We'll try and manage without. Um, certainly um, Dave Parkinson doesn't top his with, with grit. He gets away with it. Mixed up far too much, haven't I? Never mind. You can always put it in a bag and put it to one side. Right, now the new one. It looks like that was quite far in. So this is going to have to go over to the side slightly. Just desperately trying not to knock these roots on the stem.
here. Hopefully that'll do it. As I say, they're very loosely potted. You notice I haven't pressed at all. I've just let the media fall in there and then um, just tap the pot down. And that's as tight as they're going to get. No pressing. Just levelling the top at the moment. Right, that's it. Uh, do a little bit more over there. It's a bit lopsided. That's better. You don't have to worry in this case about the pot being full right up to the brim because I never water these from the top of the pot. The water soaks up from below. You don't ever pour water in the top. I never have all the time I've had them. But then I've only ever had one type, the Desecuensis, this one. I ended up with, um, I bought some, well, she came from Malvern originally, so I bought a pot that had quite a few in and um, it grew lots more that year so when I sort of got to repot them I had a lot of plants and then the following year I got a lot more plants because it grew a lot more. So I ended up with loads. <laughs> Far too many in fact. Um, and if they're growing well they will multiply quite, quite quickly. Right, so that's my new one. And that hopefully is going to make it. So it's just a bit in the crown. We'll have that out. Right, so those are they. Not too much left over after all. Goody goody. And um, these really ought to go in a shady spot in the garden through the summer. Um, you know, get some fresh rain on them. Keep them out of the sun. They can take very early morning sun just for an hour or two, or late evening. I always find the morning sun, the things that can take a little bit of sun but you really don't want too much. The morning sun I think is best because the temperature is cooler then. So the sun doesn't heat the plant up so much. So in the evening the air temperature is normally a lot warmer. And then you get the sun on the plant when the leaves are already warm from the air temperature. So I try not to, you know, and that's not what I would want to do. But these would appreciate going outside. But then slugs, snails, everything else, bringing those back in when I bring them in, you know. I mean, these will grow. Quite a few people grow them in a cold frame and don't, you know, don't have them in a greenhouse at all. Just have them somewhere that. Uh... Right. What does this say about decent orchids growing and caring? These beautiful, beautiful orchids grow in the wild in Western Cape Province, South Africa, in mossy banks and by the side of freshwater streams, and often in them. Um, do not use any type of compost, even orchid compost. They need an open, airy, nutrient-free mix that holds moisture well. Coarse peat plus perlite, um, sphagnum moss, live or dried, even just coarse perlite on its own or work. Um, suggest pots, suggested pot sizes, small to medium. Um, larger plants, larger pots. Watering and feeding. Only use rainwater. Tap water only in emergency and only when it has stood for at least overnight. You get the chlorine out, that is. Water very frequently. Stand the pot in a deep saucer, saucer or tray of water. Once a month, or less feed with a dilute liquid orchid, orchid feed. He uses blah 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 um, and he, he gives you a measure per litre. Uh, that's not a lot of good if you don't know what the fertiliser is. Well, I haven't heard of it. You see what I mean? That doesn't mean a lot does it? Um, other brands are available. Between feeds flush through with clean water to avoid a build up of salts. Yep, more with that. Keep the water fresh in the tray always, don't let it get stale. Reduce watering in winter and just keep moist, never let dry out. Uh, in hot weather stand the pots deep in water to keep the roots cool. Uh, in winter they are tough enough to stand an overnight frost. Mine are kept in a cold nomin nominally frost free greenhouse, but in extremes protect with a layer of free fleece. 
If grown indoors, east, east or west facing is best. Good light without excessive temperature. Cool winter rest suits them well. In summer they are happy standing outdoors. Good ventilation without overheating under glass and benefiting from the inevitable summer rain. Never let the plants dry out. When the old stem dies after flowering in winter, <coughs> January, February, gently remove the dead foliage. These plants multiply by new growth, upwards and sideways, from the original tuber. In the first season these will form roots and shoots, and a mini tuber. After two years, if the pot seems overcrowded, carefully move into a larger pot, but do not try and divide the plants until at least the third year, and by then you should have a good network of well-established, well-rooted tubers, but they are fragile and there will be some losses even with careful handling. That's, that's not a bad care guide actually from an amateur grower basically. It might have been copied from somewhere I suppose. Who knows? But um, as I say, I knew all that anyway. Uh, I, you know, as I say, I've got uh, pretty close contact with somebody who grows these, you know, almost professionally. He's got um, dozens and dozens and dozens of them and they turn up at shows and win prizes and he grows them very well. He also grows a lot of our na na native orchids. But the common denominator, whatever he grows, it's a dirt orchid. He grows terrestrials and that's our little bit of um, banter. He grows dirt orchids and he grows those orchids, those nonsense orchids that hang up in the trees. So there we go, a couple of potted teasers. I will do some um, labels for those and um, get them stood in their trays. They're moist at the moment. This meat, this peat is moist, or this meat is poised even, um, but it's not wet and they're going into the grow room where it's warm. So they need to be wet. So I will get them into their trays, put some RO water in there. They're not getting any food, not this time. and. Um, get that to soak right up in until I can almost see it glistening on the top and I know they're moist, wet right through. And then it's just a matter of topping up as the water gets used up. Um, most of the water gets used up evaporating, quite honestly. They don't use a lot, they just sit in it. So there we go. That, that was my what was in the box and um, that's why I unboxed it in the kitchen because I knew I was going to do that. It needed potting straight away. So that's done and maybe I've rescued my other one. Maybe, we shall see. If this grows on and gets a decent set of leaves, and this is growing, even though it's got some damage on the leaves, then it's saved, because it's in new media now. So, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.